I used to believe that only adults could make life-defining decisions. I was wrong. Seven years ago, at the age of nine, I made a decision that changed my life. My story began in preschool. That year, my class and I were instructed to dissect a fish. Everyone, girls and boys alike, were fascinated by the project. For me, it was my first biological experiment, and I was extremely excited. As I picked up a pair of tweezers in one hand and a dead fish in another, I knew at that moment I had fallen in love with biology. From that day forward, I would constantly tell adults that, well, I wanted to become a scientist. The response I received was amazing. People would pinch my cheeks, and my friends would tell me to follow my dream. So, I did. Four years later, my class and I conducted the exact same experiment. However, this time, many of the girls were no longer interested in performing the dissection. I remember standing next to a table surrounded by a large group of boys as I located the fish's heart. And suddenly, I felt as if I didn't belong. At that moment, I knew I had to make a choice. I could either back away, or I could pursue my passion. Scared and stuck at this crossroad, I decided to make my first life-defining decision. I chose to pursue science. However, this time, when I told adults and peers my aspirations in biology, well, I received some disapproving shakes of heads. And my friend, she told me directly that I should stop being a nerd. So, my question today is this. Why are young girls being discouraged from science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, also known as STEM? And how does this affect the world? In 2014, a study conducted by Statistics Canada found that nine-year-old boys and girls have similar math and science marks. Nevertheless, only 22% of the STEM workforce is female. That's it only 22%. And the most alarming part is that this percentage hasn't changed in the past 20 years. So the question to ask is why? Why are young girls losing an interest in STEM? And why haven't we done anything to resolve this issue? Well, it all narrows down to three main problems cultural biases, stereotypes, and popular media. Subconsciously, cultural biases heavily influence our day-to-day -day lives. Raise your hand if you've ever heard comments such as, boys are better at math, or power tools are too dangerous for girls. Raise your hand. Well, I can see quite a few of you have. Well, many girls hear these cultural biases throughout their life, from parents teachers, and even their peers. Isn't it about time we change the way in which we communicate to young girls? Yes. Yes, yes I agree with you. Yes. <laughs> so a year or two after the fish dissection, I made a personal discovery from the last place you would imagine, a toy store. Shopping at a local Toys R Us, I remember trying to find a present for a young girl. Instinctively, I turned towards a pink aisle labeled Girl Toys. As I was reaching for the nearest stall, I stopped. I looked around, and I noticed that all the other shelves were stacked with Barbie dolls, princesses, and kitchen sets. It made me wonder, what would have happened differently if that present was for my brother? Most likely, I would have turned down a different aisle and found a different toy. 
probably one that fosters creativity and ingenuity. I believe that a child's interest shouldn't be defined by these gender-segregated aisles. If a boy wants to play with a Barbie doll or a girl wants to play with a Lego set, we should give them that opportunity. That is why, for all the boys in the audience, yes, each one of you, you have the potential to make a difference. If you have a friend or a sister who loves math or science, make her feel welcomed in that field. Share your games and toys, or encourage her in classroom activities. Small initiatives like these have the potential to revive a female interest for STEM. Unfortunately, we don't see these stereotypes only in toy stores. They're also reflected in social media. Don't get me wrong, I love Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, but these apps are powerful tools that have the potential to reinforce negative stereotypes. Take, for example, online images. They tell women to be caring, beautiful, kind, and dainty, while men are expected to be strong, aggressive, and tough. Isn't it about time we erase these image stereotypes? Can't women look more like this? I believe that by starting these conversations about women in STEM, we can conquer this global issue. Take, for example, the hashtag I look like an engineer campaign. The movement began when Isis Anchali, a platform engineer at One Login in California, posted this photo on Facebook. It was meant for a recruitment campaign for a firm, except the negative comments and backlash she received turned this image into a debate about sexism. In response, female engineers began posting their photos, telling their stories and the obstacles they had to overcome as women in STEM. Think of the difference it would make if we continued this conversation. That is why we need to address sexism. We need to interest more girls. And we most definitely need to make a change. My story began as a scared eight-year-old girl struggling to make her first life-defining decision. Now, I am a nationally recognized young scientist who is no longer afraid of dissecting that fish. Through my experiences, I can say that girls truly are the future. That is why we need to regenerate and revive this female interest for STEM. So what I'm asking today is that each one of you imagine a world where men and women are equally encouraged in STEM. A world where gender doesn't define you for who you are, and a place where you can pursue your passion, whatever it may be. I believe that together we can turn this vision into a reality. So let's begin by inspiring her mind. And you never know, she might just change the world. Thank you.